In this video, we'll take a look at how we can use the Excel data validation feature coupled with data coming from Sage 300 Construction Real Estate via Office Connector Query. I'm going to start off and use an existing workbook that's already been set up as an entry grid for general ledger transactions. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that the data that's put into the account field uh, represents valid account numbers so that when I go to import the data, I'm not going to get rejections from uh, accounts that aren't valid. So to start off with, what I'm going to do is go to another worksheet in the same workbook. I'm going to label this uh, with the title Chart of Accounts. Enter down a couple of rows. And now I'm going to use the Query Wizard as part of Office Connector Query to connect to my data source. And then I'm going to obtain a list of the available general ledger account numbers. Okay, I can quickly skip down to the, that part in the table list simply by pressing Control F and type the table name that I'm after. And there it is, GL account. I'm going to select the account number and the account title. At this point, I could add conditions if I wanted to. I'm going to skip that step in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish. Okay, so now I have a list of all of the possible general ledger account numbers that I could use. The next step is I'm going to identify the cells that contain just the account numbers. So I'm going to select all of those cells. And I'll go up to the name box right here. and give that range of cells a name. The name that I gave it can be referenced from anywhere in the workbook. And the advantage of that is that now I can go back to my GL Entries worksheet, click inside the Account field, go to the Data tab, and use the Data Validation feature. The data validation feature allows me to control what a user is able to enter into a cell. And I can control that by type of information, such as whole numbers, decimal numbers, dates, text of a certain length, and so forth. The feature I'm going to use in this case is going to be tied to a list. Since I named that list of accounts, account list, I can make the source equal to account list. Then when I click OK, notice that now I have a drop-down arrow. And when I click that, I can select any account that's in that range. Now later, if I refresh that account list that's on Sheet 2, and new accounts have been added, that account list range automatically expands for me. So I don't have to worry about having to redefine that as things change. OK, I'm going to take this one step further and add a column to show the account title. I'm going to go ahead and insert a column. I'll label this account title. And one, one important uh, thing to note is that whenever you are using Excel's data validation feature and in inserting columns or rows adjacent to a cell where you've already applied some data validation, is notice that it automatically copied the data validation over into the new column. That wasn't really intended. So I can pretty easily go back to the Data Validation tab and click on Data Validation and click on Clear All. Okay, so now I still have Data Validation in the first column, but not the second column. It also copies formatting, so make sure that you pay attention to that. Right now that column is formatted as text. Instead, I want that formatted as general so that formulas will calculate and work within that column. Now there are two ways I could actually show the account title in this column. One way is I could use a VLOOKUP function. 
off of the data that's already in sheet two. So as an example, if I had an account number and wanted to show the account title that's from sheet two, I could use Excel's VLOOKUP function. And this is just an ordinary function of Excel. Uh, the value that I'm trying to find is the account number. And the data where the account list is located is in sheet two. And it's called query GL account. I could also go select that uh, at this point, just right from the, um, just by selecting sheet two and selecting that range, which may be easier than trying to remember the name for that query. The next argument is simply which column out of that list I want to show. Column one would be the account number, which would be redundant, of course. Column two would be the account title. And the last argument is true or false. If I want an approximate match, which for something like this would not be a good idea, uh, or if I want an exact match. So in other words, if the account number is not found, what will it do? And if I say I need an exact match, then if the account number is not found, then I'll get something like a pound NA in that cell telling me that it couldn't find it. So now as I change the account number from one account to the other, notice that my VLOOKUP does what it needs to. I could have also accomplished this using a TS lookup, uh, using the Office Connector lookup function, where it's doing the, pretty much the same thing, but instead of looking up a value out of a worksheet, we'd be looking up a value out of a table in the database. But it's the same concept being applied. Okay, so that's the basics of how a data validation works using Excel combined with data coming from uh, Office Connector. A few more details that I'll go into real quick is if I go back into the data validation properties, notice that I have an input message tab. So I can customize this a little bit and say, I want the title to be account, and then I can instruct the user what to do. something like that. I can also uh, determine what kind of message should be shown if the user types something that's not valid. So notice that the input message now displays as a tooltip whenever my selection is in that column. And if I type something in here, that's wrong, then I get the error message that I customized right there. Notice that I can't proceed until I've fixed the issue. Okay, so just covering a, a few other quick data validation features before we uh, conclude this video. Uh, in the accounting date, as an example, I could select date. It does require me to put in the valid range of dates that it will support. So I could use any set of dates that, that I might choose. You could also tie those to cells in your worksheet. So if you had a date range somewhere in your worksheet that identified the from and to date that's allowable, you could tie it to those inputs as well. Okay, and I could also use, again, an input message and an error alert message that I could customize. That would make sure that, I, that whatever I type in this column must be a date. Uh, with regard to text fields, such as a reference, the data validation that I could apply might be uh, minimum and maximum number of characters. The reference one field only supports up to 10 characters, so I can make sure that we can only type that number of characters. Uh, the journal number field, again, I could accomplish validation of that using another query off of the GL journal table to get a list of journal numbers, and then provide an in-cell drop-down list and validation of the journal number that you might type in. Uh, again, also a description. I could limit that to 30 characters using text validation. And then debit and credit, I can limit those to decimal numbers. And again, I could put in an allowable range of values as well. So if I don't ever want to use this worksheet, for example, to record transactions above or below a certain dollar amount, maybe that's a million dollars, 
I can enter those values right here. And again, I can still put in my input messages and error alert messages. Okay, so I'll guarantee that I can only type in dollar amounts or decimal values in those cells. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video on data validation. Be sure to also check out the video on using uh, the validation features of Office Connector Import or Office Connector Write, where you can have Office Connector validate or perform special validation before creating the import file or before writing data. Thank you.